Hey, what's up guys? I'm Nick Acosta and I just want to uh, follow up on a video I made uh, a few months ago about uh, righteousness, what biblical righteousness is. And I pulled up a video from a famous preacher um, where he was explaining uh, righteousness and he was explaining righteousness in a very unscriptural, unbiblical, ungodly way. If you sin, all right, you're still righteous or else the sin is greater than the righteousness that God gave you. So, I just said a mouthful just now, whether you understand or not, all right? It is the truth. Okay? Only when you know this truth, you can overcome sin. Now, listen carefully. It means you must be continually and perpetually conscious that you are righteous, that this gift is on you. Why? Why must you be constantly conscious? Why? Because every single day, you have temptations. Oh, yeah. Every single day, sometimes, it's not just temptation, you cross the line. All right? Your thoughts may go awry. Your eyes may be wayward. Your feet might go to a wrong direction. So whatever it is, God says, every day, don't forget. Confess you are righteous. And I touched on the wrong doctrine, on uh, doctrines taught on that video, um, and then I, I explain what the Bible really says. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of backlash from his followers, his fans. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and make another video just to explain uh, maybe maybe more clearly and in a shorter video. This is going to be way shorter. Um, why this hyper grace or positional righteousness is in is a man-made doctrine um, that has nothing to do with the true teachings of Jesus or his apostles okay so go ahead and tune in share this video let's grow in Christ by getting in the truth come on let's grow So positional righteousness is basically uh, you thinking you are right with God and righteous, living righteously. You thinking you are holy, that God has nothing against you just because you are a Christian, just because you believed in Christ. Now, me and you, we all became Christians, right? If you're a believer in Christ, we all became Christians. We all were born again. Because our sins were forgiven, our past sins, the moment we believed in Christ and the gospel, the good news of what he did for us on that cross, how he died, right? How he rose up on the third day, how he ascended to the Father, and how he's coming back again for a spotless church, blameless church, above reproach, holy in conduct church, according to what the New Testament teaches. So I have no argument as to how we were saved, how we were born again, by grace alone. We did nothing to earn the born again experience other than respond to the call of God, other than believe in his son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's faith and that's grace. However, my argument was that if you sin as a Christian, you sin as a Christian and God is not happy with you. You have to leave that sin. Stop sinning. You have to ask God for forgiveness for that sin. You have to admit that you sin to God. The Bible says to confess your sins to God if you sin. Not when you sin, if you sin. Okay? So it's not expected for us to sin because it says if you sin. Um, and, and, and it says he's able to keep us from stumbling. Okay? Sinning. Right? And we know that sin is a work of the flesh. And it says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. But it says, if you do sin, you have to confess your sins to God. You have to repent. AKA be sorrowful, be sorry for it and not do it again. And, and, and this preacher uh, on the video that I, that I talked about last time was saying that if you mess up, if you don't do something right, if you walk in the flesh, if you sin, all you have to do is confess that you're righteous. All you have to do is confess that you're right with God, that, 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 that you're the righteousness of God. God has nothing against me. That's not biblical. If you sin in, as a Christian, you are in disobedience. Okay, God has something against you. The Bible says there's no condemnation or guilt. That's what condemnation means. Guilt. God has something against you because you're guilty of a sin of doing something you're not supposed to do. 
There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So if you're walking according to the flesh, doing the works of the flesh, it says that according, according to Galatians 5, that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because you bring condemnation on yourself. You make yourself guilty of sin. Sin is not legal just because you're a Christian. Sin is still anti-God, contrary to the Holy Spirit. And it says, we've been born again of the Spirit to bear fruit of the Spirit, bear fruit to God. Let me share a few scriptures with you that are going to show you why positional righteousness is not biblical, it's not Christian. Uh, hyper grace, you know, grace that's always active. Even if you sin, God doesn't see it. God doesn't see your sins. He only sees the blood of Jesus and Jesus lived holy for you. Jesus lived right for you. That's not true. Jesus became a sacrifice, a lamb, so that when we look to him and believe in him, our sins are forgiven and we can be right with God. Just like in the Old Testament, animals were being sacrificed by priests in order for the forgiveness of sins to be relayed on the people, to be given to the people, to be put up on a people. Without a sacrifice, without the shedding of blood, there was no removal of sins or forgiveness of sins. It's the same concept. The priest changed from a human, regular human to Jesus. The animals changed from all those animals to Jesus, the lamb, his blood, the covenant changed from the old covenant to the new covenant. It, 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 the, the, the lamb has been sacrificed once and for all, not just for Jews, but for Gentiles too, for the whole world. But that's it. God still demands obedience. He still gave us commandments and instructions in the New Testament through Christ and through his apostles for us to obey. And I'm going to show you in the New Testament how obvious and clear it is that we as Christians need to obey, and if we walk in the flesh, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, if you are in sin right now, and you are a Christian, if you die tonight, or if you continue in this sin, and Jesus judges you one day, he will send you to hell because the Bible says so. You need to repent of your sins. Leave your sins. You are an enemy of God when you live in sin, just as if you were not born again. I'm not saying you're not a Christian, but I'm saying you're living as if you weren't, so God has something against you. You can still be a Christian all you want as if you believe in Christ and the gospel, but if you don't live like it, if you don't you know, obey his word, he's still going to judge you. That's not going to matter. He's still going to judge you one day. He's going to judge you according to your works, to your life, not your faith, not your confession. Okay, let me show you these scriptures. So first we're going to go to James 1 verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. <laughs> Why would we be blessed? Because we are doing what we're supposed to, enduring temptation. Jesus said, he who endures to the end will be saved. Not just him who believes, he who endures to the end. Um, so it says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So what do you need to do to receive the crown of life? We know what that means. Eternal life enters into the kingdom of God. We know what that means. Don't play it off. You have to endure temptation. That means overcome temptation, not sin. <laughs> Stay walking in the spirit. Stay obeying God. Continue. You have to approve God. That means you have to please him. He has to approve your actions. There's things he approves. There's things he doesn't approve. He disapproves. What else? You have to love him. It says he promised the crown of life to those who love him. The Bible says that if you love God, you will keep his commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my word. Come on. It's so obvious, y'all. James 1, uh, so that was James 1, 12. Check out James 1, 21. It says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So now we're talking about the, the, the salvation of our souls. But what's the first thing that it mentions? Laying aside all filthiness and wickedness is clear. James 1 the following verse, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. If you think you can be a Christian and still sin and disobey God and just not love God, not care about what he has commanded you to do, 
You're deceiving yourself. And if you're a preacher like Joseph Prince and you're telling people, teaching the body of Christ that you can sin and God's not mad at you, he doesn't have something against you, you will still make it to heaven. You don't have to repent. You don't have to confess. You just have to say you're righteous, you're righteous, you're right, you're righteous. All this positional stuff. Then you're deceiving people. That makes you a deceiver like the devil, a liar like the devil. You're leading people astray. And a lot of people are going to end up in hell because of you, including yourself. If you teach this and believe this and live this, be doers of the word, the Bible says. Come on. The next scriptures, uh, the next set of scriptures we're going to look at, guys, is a, a, a few scriptures from Romans chapter 2. So we're going to look at Romans 2 verses 4 through 11. And it says, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek, but glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. God will not treat Christians special. If you live wickedly, if you live unrighteously, you will get treated according to your sin. God shows no partiality. Look at those verses. Look at them very carefully, guys. It says that God's goodness is supposed to lead us to repentance. And it says that if, 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 if you're living in sin, if you're working evil deeds, you are actually storing up wrath for yourself. And on the day of judgment, that wrath is going to hit you according to your lifestyle. It's so clear, guys. And, and, and it says that God will give to each one according to his deeds. It says eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good. So in order to have eternal life, you have to continue doing good, not sinning. It's so obvious. Come on. Let's wake up, guys. Let's look at Hebrews chapter four. So it's going to be Hebrews four verses eight through 13. It says, for if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Check it out. Let anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Now you may need to read the whole chapter to get the context of things, but he's referring back to the story of the Israelites after they were delivered from Egypt by the grace of God. They didn't have to do nothing. They were delivered from Egypt and in the wilderness, they disobeyed and they were not allowed by God to enter the promised land. Just as we are saved by grace, born again, delivered from our old lives, right? Delivered. But from this point to heaven, to judgment day, this is our wilderness and we need to obey God in order for him to allow us in his kingdom. Same is the same concept. And, and, and God is using the Israelites who were not allowed into the promised land as an example for us to fear not being welcome into his kingdom. So we need to use this for righteousness into our lives, for us to hunger and thirst for righteousness and want to do the right thing and want to leave our sins behind and really fight the good fight of faith. So let's go back to where it says, um, according to the example of disobedience. So the problem there was disobedience. Check it out. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts 
and intents of the heart. And there is no creature, not even Christians, hidden from his sight. But all things, even Christians, are naked and open to the eyes of him, God, to whom we must give account. It is clearly saying, no matter who you are, God sees your life, even your thoughts and intentions, and he will judge you. You must give account to God one day, and it's possible that you don't make it into the promised land, a.k.a. the kingdom of God, a.k.a. eternal life, just like the Israelites didn't make it to their promised land and died, and God killed them because of their sin, their disobedience. That can happen to you if you keep thinking it's okay to sin, just like this preacher tells you. Just confess your righteous. Just confess your righteous. No, that's unbiblical, incorrect doctrine, false teachings that will lead you to hell to burn forever and ever. When you're out there without the fellowship of the brothers here, when you're out there in Singapore alone, when you're out there in the streets, when you're out there walking in a mall, it's so easy when you fall or whatever to forget all these things and to say, and it cannot be so true. I just, I, you know, I, I deliberately sin, then I'm trying to take advantage of grace. The devil will try to reason you, with you all these things. But truth is truth. You are righteous forever. Last set of scriptures we're going to look at. They come from Hebrews chapter 3. Okay? So Hebrews 3 verses 5 through 19. So we're going to read quite a bit. But I want you to see what the Bible says. Because so many of us only look at what preachers say. And we get deceived. And we get led astray. So as my response to people's response to my last video about positional righteousness and, and this preacher's doctrine, I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures from the New Testament given to New Covenant Christian believers by the real apostles of Christ. Not these TV preachers, money-hungry preachers, sin-loving preachers who are saying things to tickle the ear of lovers of pleasure and lovers of sin like you, if you follow this man and listen to this man. Okay, let's listen to what the Bible really says. Let's let the word of God be the response to my last video. Check it out. So Hebrews 3, starting at verse 5. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his own house whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. It's so clear. It says whose house we are if, if always brings a condition. This will happen only in the circumstance of you doing this. So it says whose house we are if, keyword, circle that, we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Meaning if we don't give up, if we continue following him, believing him and not giving up. Every time you go back to your sin, every time you go back to the flesh, you're giving up on living like a Christian, on following Christ. You're giving up on the hope of eternal life. Okay. What should keep our motor going in seeking God and living righteously and denying ourselves and saying no to sin and temptation is the hope of one day being with the Lord in glory. Praise God. That's what keeps our motor going. But it's when we stop looking at that and forget that that's the finish line and the goal. We start looking at what's temporary now on earth and start doing earthly, worldly, carnal things, a.k.a. sin. And if we do that, that means we're not continuing to the end. And therefore, we will not receive the reward that only the righteous receive. The real righteous, practical Righteous, not positional righteous. No, you have to practice righteousness. It says practice righteousness. It says be doers of the word. Peter said, be holy in conduct, not in confession, not in identity, not in position, not in faith. Be holy in conduct. Conduct means behavior. Let's get serious. Let's be sober. Let's be sober. Okay. So therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, 
Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Again, it's bringing Old Testament stories of people who disobeyed and rebelled against God as an example to warn us Christians under the new covenant under grace. This is so clear. Get this, guys. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial, in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation. You see that? He was angry because of their sin and rebellion. So God was angry at them because of their disobedience. They did not endure being faithful to God. So what did he do? He punished them. He was angry at them. Anybody who ever tells you, it's not about what you do. It's about who you are. God is not mad at you. He's mad about you. He's crazy in love with you. It doesn't matter. God is pleased with you no matter what you do, no matter how you live. If you're in sin, just confess you're righteous. Anybody who ever tells you that is not preaching according to the Bible and you can X them out as somebody you should hear, hear from and listen to and learn from. They're not biblical preachers, okay? So... Just forget about all that. Let's see what scripture really says. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you get back on the right track in, in true doctrine so that you can make it into God's kingdom one day. I'm not trying to correct you. I'm trying to correct the wrong things that you, are pro you may be believing if you're listening to preachers like these. Okay, I'm correcting that doctrine. Okay, I'm trying to help you make it into heaven, make you help you endure to the end and please God for real. Okay, so just read along with me. So it says he was angry at them. Right. So therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore on in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren. He's talking to Christians here. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So that's another danger of sin. Not just that God's going to judge you. According to your life, and if you've been living in sin, he's going to punish you according to that. But the fact that sin hardens your heart and, and sin can potentially lead you to not believing, to, to walking in unbelief, to just doing your own thing. Okay? It's, 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 it's very dangerous. The deceitfulness of sin hardens the heart. Okay? So it says, beware, brethren. The writer of Hebrews is warning Christians, for we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. You see that? So he's talking to Christians, number one, using an example from the Old Testament of obedience and God punishing and, and being angry at people's sin and rebellion as a teaching example for Christians today. Number two, number three, he's warning against Sin to Christians under the new covenant. So that tells you it's right, right there. It tells you that itself tells you you can live in sin. You can um, displease God as a Christian. He can be mad at you. And watch what it says right here. Remember that word if, if, keyword, if. That's, that means condition. We have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence, steadfast to, to what? To the end, to the very end, to the point where we see Jesus face to face at the judgment seat of Christ. We finally made it to the day of the Lord, to the day of judgment. We finally made it. If you became a believer, a Christian, were born again, were saved by grace, and then start living in sin again, that's not the end. You did not endure. You did not hold fast to your faith. And guess what? Being a partaker of Christ, being a, a heir of, of the glory does not include you. You will be punished. That's what scripture says. It's clear, right? Let's keep reading. If you continue to the end, right? Step us to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who having heard rebelled? Indeed. So that's a question. Who haven't heard rebelled? Who, who is he talking about? 
Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now, with whom was he angry for 40 years? This is, this is the response. This is what you need to hear. With who was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they, could, they would not enter his rest? But to those who did not obey. So we see Christians. Why, why is this Christian writer telling Christians way deep in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, how important this is to get and to follow the example so that we don't become like these people that God killed, punished, and not allowed into the promised land because of their sin and disobedience. It's so obvious, y'all. But to those who did not obey. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Stop saying every Christian will go to heaven. Stop saying now that you believe in Christ. Now that you're under grace. You've been born again. You will make it to heaven no matter how you live. That's not true according to the Bible. Righteousness is something you live. Something you practice. Not a position of something that's on you and can never leave you. That's untrue. God still sees you. He's not blind. He sees your sin. If you see see your sin he sees your sin it says the bible says examine yourself <laughs> come on faith without works is dead here it said unbelief connected to sin connected to disobedience faith without works is dead examine yourself to see if you are in the faith to see if you're living according to the doctrine taught to the way to the teachings of the apostles to the teachings of jesus examine yourself to see if you're pleasing god if you're living this Christian life, if you're being doers of the word, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What's there to fear and tremble about if we're going to go to heaven anyway? Repent of teaching false doctrine and repent of living in sin as a Christian. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care if somebody deceived you. I don't care if you're a minister. If you're not living the Christian way, following the teachings, the commandments of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, not just Savior, Lord, not just Savior, King, not just Savior, Master, Owner. If you're not living according to his teachings, repent and stop living like that. Start living in righteousness, practicing righteousness. If not, you will burn forever in hell with sinners, with people who don't even believe in Christ, with the devil and his angels, with false prophets. Come on, this is the truth. Let's grow in Christ. This is my response through the Bible. Look at these verses and tell me if I'm wrong. Leave your comment, share this video, and spread the word because people need to remember that the gospel is not just belief but obeyed. Amen? Bless you. Let's grow.